Okay, everyone, welcome to the updated ground instruction for exercise 17 from the flight training manual, which looks specifically at the traffic circuit pattern of an airport. So this video will look to answer questions like, what is a circuit pattern? Why do we fly a circuit pattern? And how do we fly a circuit pattern? Let's start by comparing an airport circuit to a highway traffic circle. They're kind of similar in that they're a pattern designed to direct traffic in a way that is safe and orderly and helps all the cars maintain speed. So yeah, it's kind of similar to that. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you understand the pattern, then it gets pretty easy after that because it's just modifications from the standard pattern. So the key thing about the traffic circuit is it's all about organization. If all aircraft are flying the circuit pattern the way that it should be flown, then aircraft can be properly separated and brought in for landing in a safe and efficient manner. So if you skip on over to the TC Aeronautical Information Manual, or the AIM, this guy right here, and you flip over to the Rules of the Air and Air Traffic Services section 4.3, you'll find an image of a standard circuit at a controlled aerodrome. So if we assume that this guy here is the runway in use, then you can see how you build a standard circuit around it. It's all left-hand turns and you have specified what we call legs. So you have the crosswind leg, you have your downwind leg, you have your base leg, and then you also have your final leg. Now keep in mind, we call them legs on paper, but when you're flying in the circuit, you don't refer to yourself as on base leg. You just say, I'm on base, I'm on final, I'm on downwind, just drop the leg altogether. One last thing to point out is that uh, you have also the upwind side, which we'll talk more about later, but it's always the opposite. The upwind side is always the opposite of the circuit side. So if you were to imagine yourself flying this standard left-hand circuit, it would start with the takeoff and the climb out, followed by the crosswind, downwind, base, and final. So let's start by looking at the takeoff. So we're assuming at this point that we're lined up on the runway and we've already confirmed that the runway heading matches our compass and our heading indicator. So we're gonna start to add full power. Please confirm that you've got your heels on the floor to make sure that you're not on those brake pads um, so that you're not pushing the brakes and adding power at the same time. Full power, you want your car peed off, of course and you want full power all the way in, count to about two seconds. So one, two, by the time you're done two, power should be all the way in. And you want your eyes down the runway. You literally wanna be watching that center line go underneath your airplane to make sure that you're maintaining center line through the entire takeoff. You're probably going to need a slight amount of right rudder if you're flying a 152 or a 172. Glance down just briefly to confirm full power. So in a 152, it's about uh, 2280, 2380 RPM. And then as soon as you've confirmed that, just keep your eyes on that center line to maintain that center line. Uh, after a couple of lines, you're gonna wanna glance over at your airspeed indicator and confirm that your airspeed is actually increasing. This should be right about at your go no-go point. If you're not getting airspeed, you'll probably know it, but if you're not happy with the takeoff at this point, now's the time to reject. Airspeed is increasing, then you wait until you've uh, hit your recommended VX or VY speed. We'll cover those later, but that's your recommended rotation speed. At that point, rotate and maintain uh, VX or VY in the climb out. And finally, fly your runway heading unless uh, the runway has a noise abatement procedure. Okay, we're still not quite finished with the takeoff yet. So once you're in the climb out and you're maintaining either the runway heading or the noise abatement heading, just take a look out the window and confirm that obstacles indeed have been cleared. This will normally be the case at approximately 200 feet AGL. So just go ahead and once you've confirmed obstacles clear, you can say, uh, call it out, say safe altitude, and then glance down at your airspeed indicator, make sure that you are at least above a safe airspeed, call it out safe airspeed, and then bring the flaps up. Okay, crosswind. So you're gonna to wanna to think about making your turn to crosswind, of course, after the noise abatement. But if there is no noise abatement, then you're gonna to wanna to make your turn crosswind at about half of the circuit altitude, which in our case at Langley 
is 500 feet above the aerodrome. And before you make the turn to crosswind, always make a check out in the sky for any traffic uh, that you could have out there into crosswind. So scan the sky for any traffic and then maintain about 67 knots. So keep the climb going and start a shallow right one turn. So not too aggressive of a turn, just about a medium to gentle bank of the aircraft and turn to your crosswind heading and then maintain that crosswind heading until you turn to the downwind and continue the climb up to a thousand feet. You can turn downwind before you hit a thousand, but try to keep, uh, try to get the airplane onto a thousand before you turn downwind if you can. And very, very important last point, before you turn downwind, always, always check for traffic before turning downwind just to make sure that you uh, don't have anyone else joining the circuit from the downwind that you could cut off. Once you turn onto your downwind, you want to make sure that you reach your thousand foot elevation, in this case because it's Langley, before you start to reduce power. But on downwind is when you want to bring power back to about 2000 or 2100, and you do that using attitude airspeed power trim, as you always do when you're leveling off from a climb. So attitude first, bring airspeed up to 80, and then bring power back to about uh, 2000, 2100. Then you do your downwind checks, and we're going to go over that in the next slide. Do your downwind checks. Once those are done, make your downwind call. So golf, tango, yankee, back, left hand, downwind, one line, touch and go, or whatever it is that you want. Make that call and look for traffic. So uh, they'll give you a sequencing number or they'll tell you your number one. Um, so look out for that traffic. If you've got traffic in sight, let tower know that you have it and judge your base to final turn accordingly, either based on the spacing that you want, which we recommend is about 45 degrees off the runway, or uh, with visual spacing for the indicated traffic in the circuit. And I know we've covered this many times already, but let's look at the downwind checks one more time. It's usually a flow, so primer locked, master on, mags on both, oil temperature and pressure green, lights on, carb heat hot, Mixture is rich, fuel is on, circuit breaker check, carb heat cold, seat belts, doors, windows, and brakes. And of course, the circuit breakers are usually on the other side of the mixture. This photo is a little bit weird, and that's why it doesn't really look like a flow. But just imagine that the circuit breakers are over to the right, just on the other side of the mixture knob. And we're just about ready to turn base. So what do we do before we turn base? We call out carb heat, power, turn, trim. And so you pull your car out, you bring your power back to about 1700, 1800 uh, RPM. That's your target. You turn into your base turn and you trim, which is going to be about one trim down on the trim wheel. And for that power setting, that's likely going to bring your airspeed to about 70 knots indicated because you're slightly nose higher than you were on downwind. At that point, your airspeed has decreased and you're going to be starting a gentle descent down towards final. And what you want to do is you want to kind of glance over to your airspeed indicator and just confirm you're in the white arc. Feel free to call it out. Just say white arc. And then what do you do after that? You bring your flaps in 20. And at that point, you're going to have to retrim for more nose down to offset that nose pitch up. So that's two trims up on the trim wheel. At that point, uh, your flaps are at 20, your airspeed's gonna be about 65 to 70, and you're just gonna fly that down on a nice gentle descent and judge your base to final turn. Keep it square, unless tower tells you to take it direct, because it's important that the circuit is kept square for proper spacing for all the aircraft that may be in the circuit. And now you've just made your turn to final. So what are you going to do when you first make that turn? You're going to think to yourself, am I on center line, right? Get yourself lined up nice and early on that center line. Ailerons get you onto center line, rudder keeps straight. Then you are going to look at your altitude quickly. Just glance down and confirm if it's between 600, 500 feet, bring in flaps 30 all the way in. And you're going to have to retrim probably one more trim up on that note on that trim wheel. Your airspeed should be about 60 knots with that retrim. 
and again focus on getting on that center line as as long as you fly that center line down you're not going to have to fix it on short final because that typically means that you're going to have to do an overshoot so maintain center line all the way down and remember that power controls your descent so if you're too low what do you do add power and if you're too high bring power back and sometimes if you're really high you're going to have to bring it all the way back and that's okay just make sure you maintain that airspeed of about 60 knots and trim is going to maintain that airspeed for you short final is always fun and exciting just to make sure that you're really nicely lined up and keep your eyes on the numbers or the piano keys that's your aiming point you don't really want to be aiming short of the threshold where the arrow is you want to be aiming for really those piano keys so eyes on the numbers, maintain that all the way in. And once you're over the fence, make sure that power is idle. So just call it out, confirm power idle. Now, since Langley is so short, you don't really want to flare too early and you don't really want to flare too late. If your airspeed was at 60 knots over the fence when you pulled power back, if you catch the nose drop and just hold your eyes on the numbers, your airspeed should decrease to about 55 knots. And that's perfect for a short fill landing. Just keep your eyes on the numbers and when the runway starts to expand, kind of like it does in this photo, how the runway takes up kind of like all the viewing that you have, that's your indication that you need to basically bring the aircraft to a cruise attitude. What you want to do is because your power is at idle, you're bleeding off all the energy that you brought into the landing. So make sure that you can still see the lines going and that your aircraft is more or less flying in a cruise attitude. If you lose sight of the runway, probably your nose is too high and you've gone into the flare too soon because you want to bring it to the cruise attitude, eyes down the runway, and hold that for about a second or two and you're going to feel the aircraft start to sink. That's a good thing because it shows that you're bleeding off all of the energy and when you feel that, then you can start to bring the nose slightly up just to make sure that the main gear connect with the runway before the nose wheel does. And don't forget that most of the work in your landing you've already done by the time you get to the flare. The flare is just this tiny little thing that kind of finishes off that entire circuit approach that you just flew. Um, the key points being your altitude, like your descent rate and your airspeed control. Airspeed's a big one. So um, as long as you have your airspeed on 60 knots into the short final and you go into the flare, you should have a pretty decent, and you've maintained center line, you should have a pretty decent flare. So just remember the last key points there, and we're going to repeat them a couple times going into the flare, is just keep your eyes on the numbers there, keep your eyes on the aiming point. Once you are over the fence, just confirm power is idle. Don't let the nose drop too much. When you bring that power back, just hold that attitude. Once the runway starts to expand, look up and down the runway, gentle pull, to level or cruise, whichever you prefer to describe it as, and just fly that runway, keeping your eyes on the tip of the runway and wait for that sink. It's gonna happen because you don't have any power. And then once you start to feel it, you can bring the nose slightly up for a nice gentle flare. That's it. A couple more things to remember, uh, just some common errors that are totally normal, um, just because it's your first couple times trying to land the plane. Remember to um, just don't push the nose into the landing. If you don't protect that nose gear, it's very likely that you will dive right into the runway and strike the nose gear and possibly also the prop. So do not push the nose into the landing in any way, shape or form. Don't rush the flare. If you flare too soon, then you will stall and drop onto the runway. It's unpleasant and it does happen. Uh, so just try not to rush into that flare. It's kind of the sweet spot between uh, don't flare too late and strike the nose gear. Don't flare too early because you'll stall onto the runway. If you flare too early and you go into a kind of a balloon situation and you're going to stall, just overshoot. Um, this runway is too forgiving to add power and try to save that landing. So if you have flared too early, just overshoot and go around and try again. If you become unstable, you're not on center line, you get this awful gust, gust of wind on short final. These things happen. If it does happen to you, just overshoot. It's way better than trying to save a bad landing and ending up in the grass. 
Again, last but not least, don't try to save a bad approach. If your airspeed's all over the place or if you are trying too much to try to save this landing, just add power, go around, no big deal. One last thing, very important, don't get frustrated. Uh, frustration tends to turn your brain off so you can't think anymore. If you've had a bad landing, just let it go, move on to the next one. And if you have a couple bad landings and you're not happy, just land and uh, take a break and then you'll try it up again. Circuits are something that you do all the time throughout your flying career up until the CPL level, so don't worry, you'll get lots of practice. Okay, have fun.